Okay, so question. Should mini mental be required before wheel changes? Now what's interesting to me is that this hasn't been brought in yet. As far as I'm aware. Perhaps I'm wrong. My son's just playing video games in there, so we'll have a little bit of little background noise. But anyway. It's a very interesting question to me because we've got these increasing rates of dementia. Everybody seems to know someone with dementia or there's, there just seems to be a lot more. And that we've been very successful in keeping people alive. But with that has been a commensurate increase in dementia, presumably. And, uh, and so the opportunity for financial abuse to happen has gone way up. Now I'm dealing with this right now in terms of some will changes that went through on my father and yet no mini mental is done and it's okay i get it you know wasn't required but a lot of the problems that we're running into in a society as as people age and as people could have dementia and then there are will changes or other financial significant financial movements made should there be a check and I would say, yeah, you know, this will drive up the work of uh, general practitioners, but perhaps it's, uh, it's important work. You know, often people might be dealing with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of dollars, like lots of money. And so having these things checked beforehand to say, hey, you know, you might even have a requirement for two doctors. Hey, two independent doctors have to complete this in order for these changes to go through. And uh, this would solve a lot of problems around whether there was a, whether the patient who made the will changes would actually have capacity. Now, I don't get why this isn't in already. Like we have many, many things in Australia that cover a lot of things to make it safer, make it more appropriate. And this seems to be an oversight. And perhaps there's some you know, benefit. I, I don't know if there's a benefit. I suppose it makes it easier in the short term. Easier in the short term to not do the mini mental, not have to go and prove that the patient making the changes to their will or to how their super gets distributed, whatever the issue is, that the the in the immediate time it's just quicker. Yep, we assume you've got capacity. And yet in the long term, whenever there's a question mark about it. We can't go back in time and prove that they did have capacity. And then you've got a legal fight and you've got a mess to deal with. So this would be a sensible change to me to say, hey, look, over the age of, I don't know, 55 or 60 or even 50, whenever there first could be question marks about a person's capacity, that you just have to go get a mini mental in order to do this. And at the time, there is a mini mental completed or two, and this proves that the patient or the person making the changes had capacity. And this would simplify things. This is a good idea. But is it in law right now? No, it's not. You can just go and make changes and then you have to have a giant fight over whether they had capacity. Now, if there is medical evidence that there was not capacity and changes have been made, then this could leave whoever did it in problems. And they could potentially already know that there were problems and, and, and purposely not do a mini mental in order to prove that there will not have any evidence. But if we just made this standard practice, then it might lead to a little bit more work for medical practitioners. It's like, hey, every three months, you got to, if you want to do something, there has to be a mini mental within the last three months. And if it's above 23, we're good. If it's below, 23 or below, no, you can't make the changes. And by doing this, even though there's more work in the short term, the long-term problems go way down. Now, could there be reasons why people would need to make changes when they do not have capacity? Yes, for sure. But they would be the exception rather than the rule. Like once you lose capacity, then unfortunately you have no more ability to make decisions. And so either a, I don't know, a tribunal would come in, and we have, we have all that stuff in Australia. We have the tribunals and the, the public trustee, and yes, there's been a lot of problems in Queensland with those, but 
hopefully eventually that will get sorted out. Say, hey guys, you're responsible for other people here. You can't mess this up. But overall, the system works reasonably well, except for this omission. So if we sort this out, then it would make a lot of people, their lives when they are going through grief situations, the death of a loved one, that they do not have to deal with these giant legal problems because of question marks on capacity. So here's the thing. If you hear of patients making changes to wills, or you have that situation, then let's link in a mini mental and say, hey, let's get this mini mental done and submit it with the uh, will changes. And then there's no question. There's no question. Anyway, it's a little glimpse into my world, what I'm dealing with. I'm like, oh, come on. How come this is not in place? This should be in place. That will changes require proof that the patient had capacity. Significant financial transactions require proof that the patient had capacity. And once that pay capacity is not there, eh, it's gone. I suppose one thing we could do is to make sure that we're doing mini mentors on our patients from a certain age, 55, 60. And then as that crosses the threshold or there's warning signs, hey, you're at 25, you still have capacity right now. Have you thought about your advanced health directive? Have you thought about your wills? Because if you drop below this threshold, you won't be able to make any decisions anymore. So this should be part of our routine care, our systematic approach. And maybe you're already doing that. Maybe you got it every time, but it's something that I think our practice could work on and I'll bring it up. So uh, yeah, have a think about how you check for capacity with your patients. How often do you check your mini mental? And uh, is this of benefit to our society given the increasing rates of dementia and unfortunately of financial abuse? All right, that's all I got for you. I hope you're having an awesome night. Catch you next time.